Welcome to the Tippy Toe Podcast. We got a special guest this afternoon. Who my guest is, my dog? Yo, 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 yo. You know what's going on? This your boy Fat Dollars. Rocking the building. Fat Dollars, what it do? What it going on, gang? For the people that don't know, where's my dog Fat Dollars from, first of all? I'm out of West Orlando, you feel me? Okay, then. It seems like West Orlando taking over the rap game right quick. It's time, you know. Break it down to us, West Orlando. What you, what you think about, what, 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 what you need people to think about when you think about West Orlando? Like, you know, a lot of hustlers, a lot of entrepreneurs, you know what I'm saying, are going. So, you know, a bag, you know what I'm saying, Orlando really come with a bag. A lot, of, Like I told you, a lot of hustler, a lot of business, a lot of opportunity. Okay, then. And like, was, was it always been known as West Orlando or it just got popular? Was it just like one time, just maybe just Orlando? Man, for what I know, it's been West Orlando for a little minute now. And, and what, well, let us know what kind of other artists is from your city. I mean, we have a lot of artists from our city. We got, um, that you deal with, you vibe with. Well, you know, I got my boy VVS King. I got, uh, you know, I, I deal with a lot of people, like I said, out of Orlando. We got Wu. We got uh, some artists ourselves we deal with, such as JP. You know, I got other artists out of city and state I deal with, like Jesus, VL Deck. You know, I deal with a couple of other artists. Okay, then. Okay, and now let's take it on back, my dog. Like, going to school, did you play any sport growing up? Yeah, I did pretty much all of it. Uh, I played football. I played soccer. And I box. Okay, so let's start with football. Play what position you play when you play football? I play linebacker. And boy, you lighter too, my dog. After you light your big ass joint, <laughs> you say you play linebacker. Mm-hmm. And what about uh, how were you? Were you good? How you felt? How you was? Mm, I could have got college, maybe. I won't say I was too good. Or not like that. Oh. And you say you went. To, you went to soccer next. Was it soccer next or boxing? Which one you went to next one? No, actually, football was like my last sport. You feel me? Like I did. I played football, pop one, like. Low lead and stuff like that, but I only did that for like one summer camp. You feel me? Mm-hmm. So I went to boxing. Then after that, you know, I was in boxing for like a little while, and I played soccer in middle school. Then high school, it's like started playing football. Then you know the streets too. So you know how that be. Like what it is about? Like what you felt like you was one foot in football, one foot in the street. I was really just playing football. Yeah. So you ain't really, you ain't see you. Oh, I'm going to I'm going to the NFL type of dude. <clears throat> Honest truth, I already felt like. My potential was probably hustling. I mean, hustling like, you know, I know there's a million ways to get it out here, you feel me? So maybe I was already looking at them ways or opportunity already. Because I feel like I, I've been chasing it so early, you get what I'm saying? I just knew there was a meal out here. Okay, then, so and break it down to us. Like, you feel me? Who did you listen to before you started doing music? Like, growing up, you know what I'm saying? I jammed a lot of Lil Wayne, you know what I'm saying? Lil Wayne was definitely an artist I felt like that had so much potential then and still do so. And then, you know, shortly I started jamming, you know, Future. That's around the time I started dropping music. And, and what was your favorite Lil Wayne track, if you don't mind his accent? I got too many, to be honest. Oh. You feel me? Like, because some of the track, like, a lot of people probably want favor or something like that. Like, Tie My Hands, you feel me? Shoot Me Down. <coughs> my fault, excuse me. Tie my hands, shoot me down, stuff like that. You know, I, like it's just, I'm deep into what he had going on at the time, so I favor a lot of the music that had feelings and stuff like that. Okay, then, and, and let us know, like, at what age did you start saying, you know what, I'm gonna give this music a chance too. Personally, my dog had owned a studio. Shout out OJ Carter, by the way. He had owned a studio for a long time, so we used to always <laughs> like bullshit and they'll play around and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So. I, None of us really thought but him at the time and my other boy. Okay, they dude. really like futuristic, well, Tough and John for my boy, by the way. You know, at the time, they probably know they wanted to do music, and but honest truth, I didn't know. Then I was just doing it. Oh, you were just, oh, you remember your first song recording in that studio? Um, Shout out Boosie. I did Fuck the Police by Boosie. And uh, I did Drop the World by Lil Wayne. You feel me? That's what I was saying. Like, okay, then. So now, as your city was like, Cause you know Orlando start getting big, real big. Did you feel like, <coughs> damn? I ain't gonna lie, it's a lot of niggas from my city buzzing up. Maybe I could jump in this game and turn up too. Um, to be honest, when I started rapping, like, you know, wasn't too much artists out here just doing all that rapping. To be honest, you know what I'm saying? It was like a lot of couple major artists at the time. Oh, okay, okay. okay. You feel me? So, being an artist just got popular for a lot of people, just cause, you know, the simple fact that. They probably seen their homeboy made it or see somebody that was around make it. So they felt like music was just too easy. Like, it went like, but honest truth is like, 
They don't even know that half, to be honest. Well, break it down, tell us, let us know how it was when you was like, your process, you remember your first mixtape dropping or putting stuff together, how it was to promote when you first started? Oh, uh, man, at the time I was going by the, I was going by a lot of, my phone. I was, oh, I did good. repeat the question, my phone. Like, like, like you know, you know, now it's different, you know, like I said, at that time, let us know when you doing your music, how it was with the promotion and trying to get your mixtape and stuff out there. To be honest, it was like running around with my head cut off. <laughs> Why you say that, though? Being real. <coughs> Being real, like, I ain't really know too much. I was just trying. Like I said, we self-labeled. We ain't really had nobody to look up to to give us the ways or the opportunity or anything like that. So really had to find the ways, you feel what I'm saying? And what we did, it, it was damn new what it was. You know what I'm saying? And at that time, like, who had the wave around your city if you don't mind his accent? At the time when I first started rapping, Whoop had a wave, then um, Glock 9 had a the wave. Then shortly, our boy came in, you know what I'm saying? And so I wanted to ask you a question. Let's talk about that real to me, price tag. Price tag, yeah. yeah what, what vibe you was in when you dropped that thing? Man, you know, I was <laughs> probably on some liquor, maybe Percocet, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> some good weed, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, some, a lot of my music be um, feelings don't necessarily mean, like, me just... You know what I'm saying? What I go through, what I see. My dog might be with me or I'm with him and I see him go through some shit, you feel me? But there ain't no cap or nothing like that in my rap, you feel what I'm saying? And, you might, and they wanted me to ask you, do you remember your first time you ever got on the perk? Yeah. That would be, be beat my ass. Like, what you, and what's your definition of beat my ass? That shit. <laughs> Took my ass up. I ain't gonna lie. Like, I ain't gonna lie. That shit, like, it kind of like, it's a different feeling, you feel me? Like, it, because, you know, when I first took it, you know what I'm saying? It like, you know, then I had to eat prom. Then I had to smoke more because smoking activated. Mm -hmm. You feel me? So I was just smoking more and this, that, that. So when I mean beat my ass, I don't like, then I ain't look, like, I just started popping off the whole 10. You feel me? Being real with you. Like, I used to take like fives or point fives. You feel me? I would okay. cut the 10 and a half type stuff. Okay, then. But now, you know, I take the full 10 or probably higher dose because. Emotion, what you go through. Sometimes, you know, what you go through be the perks to me, like, take away a lot of my problems. I know it sounds crazy, but it take away the problem that I don't need, if you understand what I'm trying to say. Because, mm -hmm. you know, some problems we put on ourselves, it, don't, it ain't really necessary. We just, like, feel like, man, you know, we could, uh, 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 but when I'm in a perk, I'm straight, more forward, yeah. more straight to get it done and stuff like that. Okay, then. And they want to know, too, dog, like, when you're in the studio, you, like, Crowd or you just you and your engineer? How you like your vibe when you in the booth about to record some songs? It don't matter. Like when I first started, I was a little shy, so maybe I'll say like me and my brother. You know what I'm saying? So we ain't like that. It was just me and my brother then. You feel me? But then after a little while, it's like you could bring as many as you want to bring in that bit. I'm comfortable now. I'm liable to jump the beat and probably freestyle it. Okay then. And, and let's talk about your first music video. Do you remember it? Let me get it. You remember your first music video? First quarter. Let's talk about that, though. We did first quarter, like, <laughs> all right, you know, first quarter, first quarter, but none of that. When I did first quarter, it was truly my first music video, you feel me, at the time when I first, like, was doing the song. It's just like I was coming home from immigration, you know what I'm saying? At the time, that's when I first started giving music a real chance and told myself I might want to be a rapper, mm -hmm. you feel me? So when I did first quarter, it was like little acting scene, little robbery scene, little street stuff, you feel me? Mm -hmm. Stuff that I could probably got off on this, like that, or probably <laughs> whatever it was at the time. And what about them shows, though? Like, you remember, you remember your first show, too? Were you nervous? According to the people like my brother, also the person that's still on my side, 50, and probably people around me, they told me I wasn't as comfortable. <laughs> They told me I was in this comfortable. I was supposed to be. I thought I was comfortable at least, but to them, it's like, nah, bro. You was like a little shy or what, man, whatever the case was. And what about unconditional, though, dog? <laughs> you know, sometimes you probably be a little motion, probably a little love involved type shit. You feel me? So, just out there, was speaking my feelings, how I feel at the time. You feel me? And they want to know, like, you feel me? Have you ever had a girl had you make you feel a special type of way, or you felt crazy about? Yeah, I ain't gonna cap. You feel me? What 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 was about her that had made you feel me, made you think about her? You know, most niggas we feel me, we be speaking and moving. <laughs> That'd be the crazy thing about life, though. As a man, you feel me? 
us like I won't say we don't know what we want or need because we do. You feel me? But it don't really take too much. You feel me to have a woman or somebody that you fuck with. You know what I'm saying? But it's it's just sometimes it be deeper than just a relationship. It be sometimes so ties. It could be vibe. It could be some that you can't probably get somewhere else. And you remember some of the lines from that there from that verse? Which one? The unconditional. Love me. Well, like it's. She said she loved me. Those are the those are the things that come from the heart. Yeah, I, I mean, like, if I would probably, you yeah, know, no, I'm, mm. got a lot going on right now, so no problem, no it's, problem. you know, being real with you. And what about that no deal, though? Yeah, when I dropped no deal, was like, that's when I feel like I was coming out the water. That's when I feel like I got understanding. So that's when I was like, okay, say no more. I'm finna, like, make this HBE, you know, label, uh, everything we got going on. We're finna go to the next lot, um, level, because we started learning more. We started being around okay. different situations. And for the people, what's the name of the label again? Heavy Boy Entertainment, HBE. And, and, and who that? Who the, is that? Just you? Let us know who's part of that, though. I mean, we got a couple of artists, but as far as so, on, you know, as far as pushing the label, I said me and my brother. And, you know what I'm and, and, and like, what's come with pushing? And let us know, because some people don't know. You know, some people think you know, just go to the studio, just do me. What come with pushing the label? Come with pushing the label. It come with um, you know, studio. It come with visuals. It come with. Interviews such as these, it come with mixing, mixing, mastering the song. It come with promotion, which a lot of artists don't really do because, you know, what I'm saying it come with hanging out with other artists as far as such as features. When I mean hanging out, like trying to be friends or cool, nothing like that. But it take a village. When I mean a village, like you would have to really go around trying to, you know, link with different artists so you can catch different eyes, different ears, and stuff like that. And, and let me know about that. You, you big on that because, you know, <coughs> like vibing with other artists because, you know, a nigga might say, though, a nigga being too friendly, but not knowing that, you know, you got a network out here, you know, make certain songs. You feel me? Mm hmm How you feel about that, though? I mean, I don't never, f like, got an artist or anybody being too friendly. Sometimes a person might fuck with your vibe or they might really just fuck with you. So me saying being too friendly will fuck that person's vibe or fuck my vibe. It's like me coming here, you know, communicating with you and just being myself. And you think I'm being friendly, but yeah, sometimes yeah. it's really me just yeah. being a people's person. Okay, damn. You know what I'm saying? So, that's my bad. That's what I meant to say too. Like, do you feel like a lot of people think it's not even good to be a people's person too? You feel me? They don't know you need that. Man, listen. One thing about life, bro, you can't do everything by yourself. You go around right. being a butt to everybody or being a problem to everybody. Eventually, it's gonna catch up with you. You feel me? And what I mean by that is, like, your haters gonna say what they have to say. Mm -hmm. People that's probably did you wrong or you did wrong gonna say what they have to say but it's always that group of people that know the real you or that deal with you on a consistent basic that know like man that ain't something i would ever take from bro and that's be 90 percent of the time be the facts because when the person really know you half of the stuff they say or will you know try to make them overlook it'll never happen and let's talk about that remix, dog. That Benny Seagull filling the air remix. You snapped on that thing. That thing did a couple numbers too. Let me know what vibe you was when you remixed that thing. When I dropped that, you know what I'm saying? Like like I told you, I jam a lot of G Herbal. Mm -hmm. You know, not too, especially now. So when I jam into, into, into Intuition by him, you know what I'm saying? Like, which is the same freestyle, mm -hmm. kind of grabbed my attention. And, you know, like I said, I feel like I got a lot of potential myself too. So. Like when I see certain songs that grab my attention, I like to jump on it. Whether it's from certain artists, this, that, that, it really don't make matter to me. Okay then, and and let's know like, what's your definition of flex? Before we talk about the song, like your definition of flex, like what is that when you think about flex? <coughs> when I draw flex, that was around the time I felt like you know, free my young nigga flex too. By the way, you feel me? But when I draw flex, it was like the vibe of, you know, me. Like I said. Flexing to me, or when I dropped the song, at least flex. It was like the vibe of, you know, coming out and being an artist and being a stand-up person, a family man, or however way you could help the people around you, you feel me? That's flexing to me. It's like making sure my dog's straight, my brother good. Whether sometimes it could take your last for your dog to get straight because it might get him straight to get you back okay, maybe yeah. in a different situation or a different time zone. So you could never look at it like, you know, I tell a lot of people, be like, this is my last, but ain't no such thing. If it's put up, ain't no such thing as your last because... I mean, you didn't really have plans for it. Okay, then. You know what I'm saying? And what about that cold world, though, dog? When I dropped Cold World, I fought with that track, too. Like, it's one of my personal favorites. You remember, you, remember, you remember some of it? How could the world be so evil? How could the world be so cold? Loved ones got to leave them. Lose dog got to leave them. 
Tell the vet that we need them. I could do the world be so easy. Like, when I dropped that, you feel me? I was under the impression of, like, you know, when as an artist, or I won't even say as an artist, as per, uh, anybody elevating or anybody about to go to the next level, mm-hmm. you kind of start seeing a little bit more. Your eyes more awakened. Well, at least for me, at least. And you start seeing, like, you know, as far as people taking away from you, as far as people stealing some time, fucking up bonds, messing up relationship, whatever the case is. So when I dropped Cold World, it was more on something like, you know, some of the people that did certain things to me, I never was unexpected. You know what I'm saying? It was something like I never imagined or probably thought of seeing. So when it did happen, it was shocking to me or maybe it was different to me. And then it started seeing the world for what it really was. Did it, did it hurt you like like when like somebody real close, like, you know, did something you can't imagine? It was deaf. To be honest, it killed me. Because uh, my loyalty run different because... You know, I'm one of those people that stand behind whoever that I do say I fuck with or cherish a certain way. So when it come back my way, you know what I'm saying, it kind of affect my way, my thinking, my thoughts, because I don't be expecting those actions from certain people, mm-hmm. certain, certain emotion and stuff like that. You know, I've been around a lot of people, you know, like like I told you, I've been, I been took certain losses that as I feel like I shouldn't have took. Because it won't buy no stranger, it won't buy no this, that, that, it was somebody that wasn't supposed to give me that loss. Mm. So that, that, that make you look at a certain, a lot of situation different. Because yeah. when you start seeing people that you ain't expected from, then you started feeling like it's expected from anywhere then. And your definition, what is it like double down? Double profit. Oh. Nah, like double down when it was larger and for real, for real. But look, when, like, when I drop double down, double down, double profit, double down, then I cop it. I know these hoes be sneaking. I know these niggas be watching. I keep that thing in my pocket. I keep them blue strip. I got a big drip. I do my thing, bro. They put the peck in the air. I call them Brady. You know, it's touchdown. I put some goals in my mouth for okay. 22K. That's why I just bling now. I put VVs on my neck. <laughs> okay, I'm switching lane. I'm in a rover now. <laughs> okay, then. <laughs> Yeah, but you know, we, we be vibing yeah, so like So break down that vibe, do that double down. What vibe you was in when you dropped that thing then? <laughs> Same thing, spraying them bitches. Like, that's when I feel like I found myself. I find an opportunity. I like, oh, you know what? Mm-hmm. I know what I got to do now. Like, a lot of time, you know, some people are so stuck in trying to flex that they could never get it right. Oh. And I feel like I don't flex enough. I don't care for it no more. I want to have really M's in the account. I want to know what I, like... It's a different type of flex. You know, you might be young with no kids, with nothing to care for or lose. Mm-hmm. You might think 10000 a lot of money. But on the real, bro, we maneuver that damnly daily. You know what I'm saying? Okay, like, yeah. And I ain't trying to say I'm out here just being, you know, this and this. I do a lot of, I got a lot of legitimate businesses now. Right. At least some of them that's doing what they're supposed to do. You feel Damn me? Damn right. So it's never about this and this, but I, I, I see the bigger picture now. And, and let us know, like, since growing up, when... You felt like money was important for you. Man, <laughs> listen, bro. You might think I'm exaggerating. I get, I've been getting money too young. I've been getting money so young, they think I'm an old nigga. So, so, but when to you though, you realize, man, I ain't gonna. I got to give me some money. Well, like, what's, what's, what's it like? That's what I'm trying to some, tell you. Like, some candy, fifth grade, Kool-Aid. sixth grade okay, type then. shit. That's how it really was. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. I could honestly tell you. Like, my brother could tell you. Like, my well, my haters could tell you. Even when I don't like me, I was pushing like. On a weekend, a day on a Saturday, two, three hundred, I just selling candy. Okay, then. You know what I'm saying? And that's mm-hmm. not including what I make on the weekdays, going to Monday and probably Friday. Mm-hmm. That was a quick, listen, four, five hundred dollars, no exaggeration. Like, it's, not fast. I know about that. It's documented. Like, these are, you know, matter of fact, shout out to TADA, by the way, man. Cash for Teens. Shout out to Johnny. He was a great mentor to me. You know what I'm saying? He teach me a lot of my ways now to make me who I am today, to be honest. Okay, then. And, and, and break it down to us, dog. Like, like with, with closing. Like, are you big on closing? I'm big. Yeah, I'm big on drip. I'm big on dressing. I'm big on putting some shit on. What, what's your what's, what, what's your favorite brand to rock? To be honest, bro, I'm gonna be honest with you, bro. My dog, you know what I'm saying? He got a brand it's called Versetti. You feel me? I rock my dog brand all the time. What, what's it called? Versetti. Okay then. Versetti. Versetti. Okay then. You know what I'm saying? I rock my dog brand all the time. You feel me? And it's not cause like cause to be told, I'm on the stage right now where. Mostly of all the stuff I wear, to be honest, is not designers. Mm-hmm. You feel me? When I mean designers, I don't just go to Gucci. I don't just go to Prada. I wear what's in 
motion, what's in fashion, and I put it on great. I put it on together, you feel me? And I definitely rock my dog shit. Like, right now, you got a shirt, you like, hey, man, put it on. I'm going to direct that bit and post that bit. You know what I'm saying? Tag you and all. Like, I don't really care to hate on nobody because none of them really pay my bills. Okay, then. And none of them really catch me out of, like, can't they can't do nothing really help or hurt me. You know what I'm saying? So I just look at everybody, give everybody a fair chance, to be honest. And so... So what you was going through mind when you dropped that designer crazy then? What drip was in your mind when you took that to the studio, Bill? My fault, I was trying to see if I could. Nah, you good, Bill. I was trying to see if I could, like. We vibe, we vibe. I was trying to see if I could, like, drip that be a little piece. See, I was going to come up designer crazy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But when I dropped designer crazy, I, uh, my fault, folks, I really was trying to, like, Double down and drop some fire shit from Designer Crazy. But like, right now, like I told you, I'm smoking, drinking. You know, there's a lot of shit going on. So, you know what I'm saying? But when I dropped Designer Crazy, it's like, like I told you, that was the vibe I was in. That was the vibe of like knowing what I needed to know and the stuff I needed to do as an artist to stand out or to be where I need to be at. Mm-hmm. You feel me? And it's like, bro, don't think I'm one of those niggas that care for designers, bro. I'm a humble nigga, bro. Don't let nobody, oh, I want, you know, can't eat. You know what I'm just saying? Like, I know where I came from, so I, I want the better things in life. You know what I'm saying? I want the finer things in life. Like, I came from none. Came from none. Like, I'm a, I am came from Haiti. I'm Haitian, by the way. Well, y'all know I'm Haitian already. Well, a lot of y'all tune in. That tune in with me know I'm Haitian, you feel me? What age you came here? I came here realistically anywhere from, I was young, so I said 10. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, coming from where I came from, like, what I'm doing right now is, like, plus. You know what I'm saying? Some people, it's, <laughs> it's none of them. But to me, mm-hmm. they don't know where I'm really at in life or where I could be at in life or where I want to be. So I don't really care to really show people no more until it's about that time. Right. Life is all about time. And like, eventually, you got to show what you got going on. But it ain't time right now. Okay. So I don't really care to announce it or talk about it or care to, you know, make it a topic. And they want to know, what was your relationship with VVS Kim? Well, that's my motherfucking brother. Right How did y'all meet? Me and VVS been like tight in you feel me like young like you know i always like i was a little older than him at the time i see vvs he would always remind me of like potential you know what i'm saying like he was always cool same vibe and you know my dog told me he was eventually gonna start rapping and he went crazy mm-hmm. you know he went before a lot of people and i'm so you know i'm happy for my boy i'm proud of him you know what i'm saying and, like bless him and, and how that popping came about <laughs> <laughs> and that's why I told you, that's how we tied in. Popping came about like a little shortly before he got where he, you know, like he, he was being there. You know what I'm saying? My boy was being getting to a bag. He was being like doing all that, you feel me? And that's probably when he started rapping, that's probably what made it easier for him, you feel me? Because he was being hustling. He been knew what, like he been around a lot. So when you've been around so much, you uh, oh, you always have so much to say or probably have so much in your mind going on. So you feel me? But like when we came up with that popping song, like we were deep in the studio. Was at like Z Planet, you know what I'm saying? That was owned by my dog at the time, 50. And when he did that, like, we were just at the studio jamming some beats. My dog had sent me some beats, you know what I'm saying? DB the plug. Shout out my boy DB the plug, by the way. He sent me, like, beat pack every other, like, <laughs> every other minute down there. Over a thousand beats by my boy. No, no, no cap shit. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. that's the only producer you deal with, or you deal with? No, that? I deal with a lot of producers. I deal with a lot of pro- like he's like in Netherlands. You feel me? He's a little over. I deal with him because like for some odd reason he sent me so much for some odd reason. I always find the vibe I'm looking for with him because imagine a person sending you like in a week, let's say twenty five beat, fifty beat, hundred beat. Mm-hmm. Like every time I check the email, twelve, fifteen, five of them, mm-hmm. seven of them, two of them. Like he always, it seems like he think about me. So I, so I, you go I try all to all them beats. Man, you might think I'm bullshit. I got some save up right now that I ain't just you know touch with, but I really deal with a lot of. But some of the producers I deal out of my city, you feel me? Even other state like Georgia, mm. and maybe other cities, you feel me? In state, OJ Carter, like I told you, that damn near gave me the wave and gave me you know teach me like hey certain things in music. Notepad, I still deal with him. I deal with my boy um, Benji. Yeah, there you go. Benji, you know what I'm saying? Social Beats and them boys. Kodo. Like I said, those are people like, I feel like when it comes to beats, they think about it just how I think about it. It's a career. It's a form of work. And you know that, okay, boom, this man going to make it happen. Just I feel like they're going to make it happen. Fast, fast, fast. And then, 
like being you from Orlando, I want to ask him like some Orlando question, like, like, like knowing like you know like like the the Glock Nines and other artists, like what it is like when you catch the the buzz. Sometimes it seems like trouble found. Man, even even the, even the whoop when he caught his big break, I don't know what he went to jail too. Because like, what, what what is is it like is it is it really like it's true like stay away from home when you catch that big buzz or what, what you feel like? Sometimes in your opinion, like even with me on my stage right now. It's it's not really home, mm-hmm. believe it or not. And ninety percent time you think it's the home, it's the people around you. You know, sometimes people around you manipulate you or they manipulate the next person, maybe because you probably in a different state or you traveling more, or you're not doing the things they want you to do. So now it become like, okay, seeing you, oh, we talk better, you about him. Mm-hmm. The next person, oh, uh uh-uh. uh. Then eventually you start telling the next person, Oh, bro told me bro was a bad person. Mm-hmm. So eventually it start everybody start looking at you like you a bad person or or a threat or something else when you really ain't, you feel me? So, you know, as a lot of artists, you know what I'm saying, if you pay attention to the game, it's always an inside job, kid. It's always either a setup, somebody you love. And one thing about a setup, and anybody can tell you, it's not something you could really get off on because the person that probably fuck with you the hardest or have potential of loving you or knowing you is doing it. So however you played it is to their advantage because they know everything about you. They, that's why I like the quote, keep your friends close. Keep your enemies close, close but your friends closer is like one of the most betrayed posts ever if you ever pay attention to it, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But it's real. Because you know your hater. You know a person that don't like you already, so you stay away or you just pull up on them with the same emotion. Yeah. But a person that's trying to snake you, a person you love, that's playing under you, that's a different type of vibe. Oh. It's a different type of vibe because too much manipulation, too much this and this and... Like I said, that's how a lot of people assault your character or play with your character as well, too. By just making it seem like, you know what I'm saying, you is the bread person. But that's why you just got to be the person you really is. Because eventually, like I said, whatever people do, you got to show it. Yeah. And what about that? Probably Stranger's Love. When I dropped Probably, it was just like, and the Stranger's Love was just basically like... Going through a little emotion in my life, you know what I'm saying? Like getting over probably the emotion of my life, should I say. It. When I dropped into so I was like realizing what the world was for what it is. Like anybody could trade on you. Anybody could say they love you and don't love you for real. Anybody could do you wrong. And you know, that's learning that love ain't, you know, that's that's pretty much how I came up with that song with Soldier Kid too, like fake love. I was about to ask you about that. And like, <clears throat> how did you meet? Um, how did you end up meeting up to drop that track? Like with Soldier, you know, I'm gonna be honest with you. It's just like me wanting to deal with different artists. Me wanting to deal with an artist in Orlando or in the Florida area that, you know what I'm saying, was cool down to earth. So it wasn't really just on some Soldier Kid stuff being real, you feel me? I fuck with bro too. He got a good vibe and everything like that. It was really trying to link with different artists. Network, yeah. Yeah, you know, and when I hit bro up, he was, you know, like half my five type stuff. Like, what's good, gang? What's going on type shit? You feel me? What it is. Damn so man. after that, it was like easy link, you feel me? Because I did reach out to some other artists, but they were doing too much. And I, you know, like I said, I just enjoy music, so I don't really care about the extra, to be honest. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Does, 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 does it get frustrated sometimes when you digging a nigga music, but when you highlight him, it's not the same person, you know? Not really. Mm-hmm. Honest truth. I did a song with VL Deck, you feel me? He was like great vibe, like he was just like me. He was just like, like I said, when you when you dealing with different artists, when you doing with like features, you want to deal with somebody that fuck with you or somebody that down to earth. Because sometimes you might want to deal with a person that's above you or below you. And I don't mean it no disrespect when I say that, but it's a grind process. A nigga might put in more work, so you might have to deal with them different. Or a person might put in, you know, just trying to put in work, and he have to deal with you different. You know what I'm saying? So it's all on the vibe, kid. You know what I'm saying? You like as an artist, you know your vibe. You know what type of person you deal with and type of person you is. So. You be trying to go with the person with the close personality, whether it's that, 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 that. Because it's never about, music is music, bro. It's going to get somewhere based on the either fame, popularity, name, or the artist you're dealing with. Right. Feel me? Or yet could be hatred. Because now that they hate you so much, they just want to see what it is. But that's that work, too. Yeah. And so, like, they want to know, too, like, if you had to work with one artist in the game right now, like, who would you pick? You know, I'm going to be 100, like, I'm always going to say Lil Wayne. I am about to say that. Lil Wayne, I am about to just say that, too. But, like, who would do the beat, though? I got to, like, personally, Zaytoven. 
Yeah. Zay Tobin, and who's going to produce the video? The reason I say Zay Tobin, because still right now I'm still trying to get my boy. Oh. Yeah, me and my boy right now, Stefan, I have to get it right. It's not about so much on some, you know, it's just, I, like I said, Jimmy so much Lil Wayne, he just, mm. and, you know, some, a little bit of Gucci, there's those people to kind of grab my attention and kind of Metro booming, those people, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Who, 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 who you have to do the video then? You got Wayne on the hook, or the verse. You feel me? You got Zay on the beat. Who's doing? Who's shooting the video, though? If it's on some Florida shit, I'm gonna definitely get Drew. Drew. But then if it's just, I still got my cameraman that I still have there too, cause my boy Fine. Shout out Jeff, by the way. You know, check out my visual. Let me know what you think, and you could just tell me how you feel about his visual. But he upcoming up as well. Okay. But on some Florida shit, them boys. But if I'm going big, you feel me? Like I would have to honest truth said. You know, I can't, it's too many names and too many assets to say, but, you know, I go by, it's a lot of artists, you know, filmmaker from Chicago that brought Chief Keith, cause, you know, mm-hmm. them boys up. Then you got Dirt, or, you know, that got his own camera, man. You got Lil Wayne that have his own camera and Cash Money and got their own camera. You know, everybody got their own, you know, person. So that's kind of tough to say who I would pick because then I would have to really, like, sit down and if I would have to go to my best interest, I would have to sit down and really look into my best interest. And then they want to ask knowing you are Zoe too. Like, how you feel about the situation with the top dogs with the Yike and the Kodak? Jack Boy, really, you know, I'm on it right now. I didn't say Yike and Kodak. <laughs> <laughs> Jack Boy and Kodak. <laughs> yeah, like, I'm gonna be a honey, though. I don't really like to pick side on family situation because. Well, not about picking sides, about like how you feel about like how can, what can they do to just, you know. I'm gonna be a honey with you. I'm a family Cause person. Because that's what everybody wanna see. Everybody wanna see them. I'm pretty sure nobody want to see them beefy. People want to see them, you know, be back together and say, fuck it. Yeah, like, that shit, I'm going to be honest, because, like, like I say, even around my own circle, and around my own family members and stuff, like, we got disagreements, and, you know, sometimes I get mad. They know that, too. They know I got a short temper. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? That's why sometimes I do the drugs, too, because it's a little level me. But, you know, at times, they take it personal. Sometimes I take it personal, you feel me? That don't mean I'm a, I'm finna go harm them or try to, you know, it's, it's just at the motion, probably a week or month. You know, if they if they righteous, they righteous, gang. You know what I'm saying? If they fuck people or fuck person, they is. Like, one thing about life, if a person good, they're good. If they're bad, they're bad. That's one thing about life, you know what I'm saying? And one thing about, you know, life too, we learn even from both of them boys listening to their story. People do m- mature. People do grow up. And people sometimes I grow people. Like, especially like Yike said and especially like he said, you feel me? And there might be at the stage where, you know, real friends don't compete. You know what I'm saying? Real friends should never, well, at least should never compete unless he's on a positive level. Like, you know what, bro? Let's rent up 10 this week. Mm. That's not competing. That's you telling me, let's get it. You know what I'm saying? Let's let's grind, my let's nigga. Grind, like, yeah. I know what you, we could do. Uh, come on. You know what I'm saying? Matter of fact, you need to be on a passenger seat. I need to be a driver seat. Come on. This week, 10 o'clock. You know what I'm saying? That's on some positive shit. That's on some grind shit. You know what I'm saying? But it's different when, you know, I don't know what's been taking place. I don't know how them boys' relationship took in place over the years because, you know, we all was known or well from all would believe they was like real close you know what i'm saying so i don't got nothing to say because as an artist myself i don't want to be throwing shots at nobody i don't want to come at nobody on some oh he trying to this he trying to that like i told you i'm a hustler myself i don't really be giving a fuck what the next person's situation be because i have my own situation that i'm trying to go through myself you know what i'm saying not that i'm trying to take anybody to do it's like i could see it i respect it i could look at it i could listen to it mm-hmm. view it but I got my own shit going on. I got kids myself. <clears throat> I have family. You know what I'm saying? There's grooming or not, there's still family, you feel me? So I don't really have, you know, I maybe got f- two, three minutes out of the day to check out what they got going on, which, right, you so. know, hoping they fix because yeah. family is still family no matter what. Mm-hmm. You know, like I told you, sometimes I get mad. Sometimes I get maybe you want to take it there with them, but with family, you just got to really take the L sometimes. And before we get out of here, you had to say too, like you, I guess you had... Like, I guess one part of your life had came home. How long did you do that th- at that time? Oh, immigration. Oh, that way it was immigration? Yeah, I did about a year. Like, damn, like, what, like break that down to us. Like, what that is like being in there? That's like being like, locked up? That's hell right there. Hell right there. Because that, no reason for saying that, it's like a lot of, like, islanders, you feel me, come here. Mm-hmm. They're already down near other situations for where their life was in danger or better life. You feel me? So to come here, let's say seven years later, some people that get ported might be half millionaires, billionaires, or whatever the case is. Or there's some that don't have nothing. Mm-hmm. So for you to push the atmosphere and change it up to another level, that's definitely ain't 
a hundred, you feel me? Or at least to me a professional. Like I feel like ain't nobody that much of a criminal where you say, you know what, I gotta get them away from that far away. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? It should be some type because first of all, half of those people that go to immigration already did the time. Like me, I was on probation for four years mm -hmm. and I, I was on my third year when immigration came and picked me up. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So to me it won't fair because a person that did two years of a situation, you know what I'm saying? Done with that situation and had to do another four years of the situation. And then you tell me you come pick me up to come do another year trying to get me to explain that situation you already got me for. Mm -hmm. Then it makes sense to me. Facts. You know what I'm saying? Because then it's like a trap. It's like, what were you really sent me up? You know what I'm saying? It, it, it don't add up. You feel me? I feel like the system, like me, I'm not too much of a, I'm a politician, but I'm not a, into politics. You feel me? Right. So, like, you know, I won't say too much of what certain president doing or politician doing or representation or whatever the case is, but I feel like it's not fair to a lot of people. Because imagine you telling me I'm going to take the father, which is the only person working in the family, out of here. Then what you want him to do? So would you rather them ask you, the government for the money? Because it seemed like it was the government aiming for or whoever mm -hmm. for them to be asking. We don't want to get too crunk on that. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, like I said, I'm not a, <laughs> you know that's not mean. something I really care to talk about. You know, you know what I'm trying to say. I already know. You feel me? And, and then let them know before we get out of here what, what they need to be listening to, what you pushing. <laughs> Guys, for the people that fuck with me and a few people that's listening, you know what I'm saying? We pushing a lot of stuff. We have a lot of music we push daily, monthly weekly we got visuals we pop them there every week them there i know i've been sometimes i i get beside myself i get carried away but i'm back better so there's a lot going on you know what i'm saying and i'm gonna push every issue i'm gonna make sure you're happy and if there's any requests y'all can hit me up if it's a beat y'all feel comfortable with me snapping on hit me you know like i told you i'm all around i'm like i said hbe the label it's out of west orlando next to blow next to be up yes sir what you say gay Oh, yeah, 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 my fault. You know, I thought he was going to get to that. No, I was going to get to that. Too. Yeah, yeah, so you I know, go But you said everything, but I want to know that is there any song or mixtape we pushing, though? Yes, sir. Right now, I am pushing a part two of one of my mixtapes. Well, this, I'm going to be on it. This time I'm dropping an album, which will be on all streaming sites and YouTube will be videos and stuff, visuals and stuff like that. But I'm pushing my, like, because I can drop five tape. You feel me? Mm -hmm. So it's time I drop an album, show y'all my real potential, show y'all what I could really do. I'm not saying I've been taken away from y'all or anything like that, cause y'all check out my mixtape. But I'm feel like, as my city, you feel me. A lot of artists, I don't really too many see artists that's mainstream or to that potential of industry in my Florida level, or oh, well, should I say Orlando level? That to drop an album, okay, so yeah. I'm gonna drop my next one will be an album. So okay. the name and everything will be coming soon, but it'll be definitely worth the while. It'll be a lot of tracks. It'll be a lot of visuals. It'll be a lot of understanding. Yeah, I'm right. And then for the people though, I want to follow you. How can they follow you, my dog? Now you can follow me on all platform, which is under Fat Dollars P H E T D O L L A Z. You can follow me on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. I got a Twitter, but I got I got to I got to I got to log in. So don't, don't don't hold me up to that right now. <laughs> mm -hmm. But yeah, shit like Apple Music, Spotify. I'm on all platforms. So I ain't like I told you, ain't no excuse. But this tape, like I told you, well, this album will be on just streaming platforms. Y'all know what it is. Tip it toes. Let them know what it is, man. Fat dollars what it do, my nigga. Hey, what's going on, gang? We appreciate you coming through. It was deaf. And, like I, I, and let them know, you, you got some people with you. Who, who, who that was in the back? Who them is in the background? Well, shout out my manager. You heard me rocking. He know what it is already. I ain't finna say his name. He ain't allowed to be on the scene or nothing mm -hmm. like that. Shout out my boy, boss man, Linsky. I'm a boy for real in the trap, for real. He really get it done. Real street nigga. Love and also respectful. I'm a dog. Okay. But shout out my whole gang, HBE the label. Shout out the artists in the gang. Shout out my sister. Shout out my homeboy, which rap on the label. Shout out my sister, who rap on the label. Shout out everybody, man. Shout out my dog, who keep making clothing. Shout out, you know, we tiptoeing. What you we mean? Tip it toe, touch your nose tonight. So we're going to turn up. What you mean, okay then? Okay then. Mm -hmm.